Now, one of the things I want to, the last thing I want to mention for this chapter is that uh, when you have multiple indexes, it's harder to maintain collection-wide statistics, right? For example, how do you maintain the collection frequency of a term when the postings list for that term are spread across multiple indexes? It's going to be harder to maintain those statistics. And, you know, similarly, when we talk about spelling correction, uh, again, you know, those techniques that we discussed were assuming that we have a single index storing, you know, all the, the k grams, for example, in the k gram index. How do you present the, uh, how do you compute the various spelling alternatives? And then how do you use the collection frequency to decide which of them is uh, more important? Which of the spelling alternatives is the most important one? You know, when those statistics are harder to maintain for multiple indexes, this problem also becomes harder. And then in addition, you also have these invalidation bit vectors. Okay. Now, one, one principle that is used is, uh, yeah, when I said invalidation bit vectors, again, I'm, I'm talking about uh, the fact that documents may not be physically deleted from the postings list, but they may be just marked as deleted in the bit vector. So again, when computing statistics, you have to keep in mind that some of those postings don't correspond to existing documents in the index. Now, one simple heuristic that is used is to compute these statistics using the largest index, okay, ignoring all smaller indices. Okay, that's one simple heuristic, but it's going to be relatively inaccurate. Now, most of the large search engines do dynamic indexing because documents in, on the web keep on changing. But sometimes what happens is they periodically re reconstruct the entire index from scratch. And usually that's done on an entirely separate set of machines. And once a new, brand new merged index is constructed, they will suddenly switch the query processing to that new index instead of process sending the queries to the... Uh, I'll stop here. But basically, we've, we've basically completed this chapter. So I'll just drop the last two slides because these are just trivial slides. Uh, you can just read about Google Dance yourself. Uh, it's it's this phenomenon where suddenly Google switches to a new index and then, you know, the results are kind of different. And uh, think about how to extend what we've discussed in today's lecture to a positional index. We were assuming a non-positional index. So with that, I'll end this lecture. So we finished chapter four. Uh, we're going to move, move to chapter five in the next uh, lecture. Maybe just a couple.